Hey guys, it's time for the doctrine talk this week. Um, the doctrine this week is on reconciliation. Reconciliation describes a work by which parties who are at odds are made one with each other once again. Um, as it applied to our salvation, reconciliation first recognizes our alienation. That is, our sins have separated us from God and have placed us under His just wrath so that apart from Christ we face nothing but condemnation. Um, however, God sent His own Son to bear the penalty of our sins, removing the cause of estrangement, and thus winning us back to personal fellowship with Himself. Paul argues that because we have been reconciled to God through the work of Christ, we should now be agents of reconciliation for others. That is, we should be ambassadors of this and um, because it's the greatest news of all time. Um, where did we see that this week? We saw it in the brothers' acknowledgement of guilt and their treatment of Joseph and their concern for Jacob and Benjamin set the stage for reconciliation. Um, key points to remember in our passage. Reconciliation is a work by which broken relationships are restored. Full reconciliation involves both the willingness to forgive and the repentance on the part of the one forgiven. Um, God empowers his people to take the first step in seeking re reconciliation. Reconciliation. Reconciliation is an opportunity to lovingly restore people in relationships as we own our part and help others own their part in conflict. In the power of the Holy Spirit, believers can use every conflict as an opportunity to model his reconciling love and encourage others to believe in him. Believers live out the ministry of reconciliation as we pursue peace and unity. Um, unexpected and undeserved love further the work of reconciliation. So, when we do not believe, um, by default, we hold a grudge, and we attempt to justify rather than own our own part in conflict. I don't know. Um, I'm guilty of that. I don't know if any of you guys are. Um, but when we believe, we ask God to give us the courage to make heartfelt amends when we sense the strain in a relationship and the integrity to ask for forgiveness for our part in any conflict. So how do we apply this as a leader? Um, first of all, as the most forgiven people in the world, Christians should be the most forgiving people in the world. So who or what in your life are you finding it difficult to forgive? How can the gospel of Jesus Christ motivate and empower you to forgive others? And when we repent of our sins and God forgives us, he releases us from the penalty of being separated from him forever. When we forgive others, we release them from the penalty of personal separation. Secondly, God has redeemed and reconciled us to himself and prepared us to call others to respond and to be reconciled to him. So how does this truth raise the stakes in your service as a leader in BSF, in your church or in your communities? I'm going to ask that again. How does this truth, the truth that God has redeemed and reconciled us to himself and prepared us to call others to respond and be reconciled to him? So how does this truth raise the stakes in your service as a leader in BSF or your church or your community? Where do you see God working? And what is he asking you to do? Will you gratefully offer all of yourself for his high purposes? And every believer plays a part in the ministry of reconciliation. This is the work we have been given to do and the message we declare. You have to be restored. You, you, you can have a restored relationship with God through Jesus. Y'all have a good week. I'll see y'all on Friday morning.